Hi friends, uh, welcome to Metplaza. Today we are going to see about one small commercial aeroplan installation. So how it does that? So let's go to the process. So first of all, you know we are storing the well water to this tank. So this is around 5,000 liter. Then from th from this tank we we took the pipe for the the feed pump section. So the pump uh, is uh, totally controlled by this uh, sensor. So according to the the level the pump will on and off so this is normally called as a float switch so you can see so this is the, the pump section so once we enter inside we can see clearly how it's connected with the pump so let's go inside this is the the, the main feed pump so which is supplying water to the sand filter and after that from the sand filter it will go to this three, three cartridge filter then from this cartridge filter it will go to the RO high pressure pump then from RO high pressure pump it will go to the compress so we will see a little more uh, clear about this process so this is the current force pump so this, this is the main pump supplying water to the sand filter so the discharge of the pump is having one, uh, one controller which is uh, PM1 which is uh, coming by current force itself. The main purpose of this PM1, so whenever there is a pressure in the line, so this controller will make the pump off, so that the pump will not have any pack pressure. So, I mean, this is for, uh, this is one kind of protection for the pump. And from this, you can see it, it is going to the car, sand filter. So this sand filter is normally having different kinds of medias. So you see, up to here, up to here, it has uh, purpose, and up to here, it has silex. Silex is like a, I mean, uh, little thicker particles of the shaft. Then up to here, it has a fine sand. So this is the fine sand. So this is the fine sand. So up and down, it has its own uh, stainer. So normally, whenever the filter is in the service mode, the water will go through the the water will go through this media, then it will go, and it will be, it will, it will try to enter inside the stainer, then in, inside will be the one small pipe, from the, through the pipe the, the filter water will come out, then it will go to the, the next step. So now, uh, now the, now, now the unit is in the running conditions, so the, the sand filter is doing its filtration, then this is the outlet of the sand filter. So in the, in the outlet of the sand filter pipeline, we connected one uh, anti-scalar dosing pump. So which is normally to avoid uh, the membrane uh, salt formations. So this anti this anti scalar dosing it will help it will help to avoid uh, salt formation inside the membrane. Then after the dosing, it will go into the sedimentation filter. This is nothing but this is one kind of uh, cartridge filter which is 5 micron uh, 5 micron bore size. Then after this uh, this is mainly to remove this uh, the particles which is more than the 5 micron. Then after this it will go to the carbon filter. Normally carbon filter is using of uh, removing the chlorine content then to remove the adder then to remove the smell. If there is any smell in the raw water this filter will remove completely. Then after that, the water is going to the other sedimentation filter. Here we use one migran uh, cartridge filter. So we will see one small, uh, small example for this cartridge filter. So this is the this is the five migran cartridge filter. You can see because the the reason for it's uh, too much uh, scale formation. Plus this is the first filter. So there is a reason it, it was affected too much. So this filter, this is the carbon filter. So this is the one will uh, help us to remove the chlorine and other and smell. It can be the water. So this is the, the second one. Then this is the one micron filter. Because normally it will not affect too much. Here yeah, this is the, the third filter. So whatever problem it will affect the first one. Then once the water passes through these three filters, then it will go to the pressure switch, then the inlet filling wall. Normally the pressure switch it will it will wait, it, it's, 
it, it will work according to the, the pressure ranges. So now we set like one bar pressure. Once the pipeline is filled with one bar pressure, it will wait for some uh, seconds. The uh, once it's confirmed, then it will give signal to the high pressure pump to start. So normally this pressure switch is helping the pump to avoid running in the uh, without water. Then uh, this is the section of the section of the high pressure pump. Then this is the device of the high pressure pump. So now we have here uh, two RO membranes. So each membrane is designed for 250 liters per hour. So the, the flow is uh, coming. This is the, the main feed line after the high pressure pump, which is going to the membrane through upward direction. Then all the reject. The product will go go to this line. The reject will enter to the second membrane. You can see the the flow direction here. It will go. Then the, the product will be collected in the, the same pipeline. Then the reject is in another another pipeline. The reject water it will go to the the reject water which is connected to the solenoid wall. <coughs> Normally the solenoid wall. Whenever once we start the RO unit, the solenoid wall will keep open for 30 seconds to flush the complete uh, membrane. So after 30 seconds the solenoid wall will off. Then the water will go through the flow meters. Then in this flow meter we can see. So in this flow meter we can see the the flow of water. How much it is going out now? Here is the product water. Our permit water flow you can see here. So this is the the RO, RO product water TPM. How much areas in the product water you can see here? So this is the one is showing is uh, this one is showing how much pressure in the RO high pressure pump inlet. This is how much pressure in the RO high pressure pump outlet. So this is the wall. You can use this wall to adjust the RO liquid water. <coughs>